Hi, this is Yusuf Tsinogiannis and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation. And this is case 50 for the manual of non-CTO coronary interventions. This is a case demonstrating issues with culprit vessel identification. The patient was an elderly woman who presented with rest chest pain and was found to have ST segment changes with T-wave inversions in the precordial leads during those episodes of chest discomfort, which actually normalized when the chest pain resolved. She had many of those episodes, however, her cardiac biomarkers were negative and her ejection fraction was normal. She was referred for coronary angiography that demonstrated essentially a normal right coronary artery. And these are the pictures of the left, which at first glance did not demonstrate any significant stenosis. The left main appears okay. There's some tortuosity on the LAD and the circumflex, but no visually significant lesions. Once again, the LAD seems to be free of significant disease, as is the large diagonal branch. Going to different views, once again, there appears to have been no significant disease in the circumflex. The proximal LAD is an area that might have something, but again, nothing is clear, clearly significant at first view. And then in the spider view, there was indeed some stenosis in the ostium of the LAD without significant disease in a torture circumflex or a ramus branch. So what should be done in this case? No significant disease on the right. There's maybe some disease in the ostium of the LAD. This is an example where FFR or any functional assessment should not be performed since the patient is having an acute coronary syndrome and as a result the resistance to myocardial flow may be dynamic and the negative FFR or any resting index might not be reassuring that the patient does not have significant stenosis. As a result we decided to do imaging and OCT is the preferred modality because uh, it can potentially identify thrombus. OCT was indeed performed. It did not demonstrate any intracoronary thrombus, neither in the mid LAD or in the left main and the proximal LAD. However, there was a significant lesion in the proximal LAD, although assessment by OCT is uh, challenging for assessing significance of the stenosis. Nevertheless, this was the only lesion that was found and the patient had typical symptoms. Therefore, it was decided to proceed with percutaneous coronary intervention. This is a Medina 010 bifurcation lesion. Therefore, we decided to do provisional standing. We thought the chance of um, having compromise of the circumflex ostium was very small. Therefore, we did not place a safety wire into the circumflex. The standing was deployed and a nice result was achieved with Timothy flowing the LAD and the circumflex. And actually the patient did have uh, an uneventful recovery. She did not have any recurrent episodes of chest discomfort. So what to do when a patient is having symptoms suggestive of ACS, but does not have a clear culprit? Multiple and geographic views is the first thing. In this particular case, the ostium of the LAD appeared to have a lesion in some projections, but not others. And then uh, imaging, preferably with optical coherence tomography, is the preferred way to, first of all, look for stenosis, but even more importantly, detect the presence of intracoronary thrombus that uh, qualifies the lesion as a culprit. The use of functional assessment, either with adenosine, with FFR, or with resting indices, once again should not be done in patients with suspected acute coronary syndromes, because in those patients, coronary resistance can change dynamically, and the negative FFR or resting index may not necessarily be reassuring. Finally, when treating a bifurcation lesion, in this case it's a 010, provisional standing is the preferred approach. Thank you very much.